morning everyone. So I've had to come indoors to do the devotional today because it was a bit dark out in the Wendy house and um, couldn't really see what I was reading. But maybe I should ask John to put like some lights up or something. That would be quite fun. We have got a little bit of electricity in there so it could be possible or a lamp because as the winter comes it's going to get darker isn't it. But anyway with today we are reading Jesus be the centre and isn't that our our desire in, in all that we do is that Jesus is the centre of everything we do, everything we say. And I find myself, often it's not the case, but my heart longs for it to be. And I'm, I'm conscious that I want to see that more and more in my life. So teaching like th teachings like this are, are really wholesome and really helpful. So our scripture today is 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and it reads, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast of my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I love how in Luke 24, the Holy Spirit intrin intrinsically sorry, records for us the meeting that Jesus had with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus on the very first day of his resurrection. With heavy hearts, grieved and shell-shocked, they talked about how Jesus, whom they greatly esteemed, had been taken by the religious leaders, condemned to death and crucified. Read the full story and notice how the two disciples were caught up with their own understanding of the events that had transpired and with their thoughts about the redemption of Israel. As a result, they were downcast. They were disappointed and depressed. This is what happens when the truth about Jesus is absent from our minds. The disciples had hoped that Jesus would be the one who would redeem Israel. To them, Jesus was simply a means to an end. They were more consumed with Israel's redemption than the Redeemer himself. No wonder they were depressed. Jesus can never be simply a means to an end, no matter how noble that end may be. We need to be occupied with him and allow everything to revolve around him as he takes centre place in our lives. That's so important, isn't it? So often we can be so noble in our intentions, but actually in our everyday life, in our, in our waking and our sleeping, in our walking and our talking, that Jesus be the centre of those things, that he be glorified and that he be our, in our thoughts and in our hearts and in our speech and that everything, like the writer puts, would revolve around Jesus. Because that's when life works, isn't it? The disciples were downcast because they didn't believe in what God's word had prophesied about Jesus' suffering and resurrection. If they had believed and understood that the events in the last three days were all orchestrated by God, and that the cross was his grand redemption plan to save all men, they would have been rejoicing with faith, hope and love. They would have been greatly anticipating their reunion with the resurrected Christ instead of being so inward looking and discouraged. But because of their wrong beliefs they had become disillusioned and were mentally defeated. If you're feeling fearful or anxious or depressed today, do a quick check. What's on your mind? What's your heart occupied with? Are your thoughts filled with faith in Jesus, the shepherd of your life? Or are they filled with apprehensions about the future, fears about your current situation, and excessive self-introspection? I think that's so true. Just when it, the writer put there, the shepherd of your life, so important that we memorize, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because that, it's such an all-encompassing scripture, a verse, which is, the Lord is my shepherd. I remember once I did a, a kind of thought on that scripture, and I, I just changed each, the emphasis on each word as I said it. So the first time I said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then the, the second time, the Lord is my shepherd. And then the third time, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And that might sound a bit silly, but for me, it, it helped me 
understand each section of that verse, the importance that it's the Lord Jesus is our shepherd. Sheep outside of the fold are lost. They are without hope. But sheep within the, the fold, they are within the flock, they are protected. They are looked after. They are cared for. They're provided for. Jesus is our shepherd. Give him center place by believing that he is the answer to everything you need in life and begin to walk in a new measure of his peace, joy and liberty. And our thought today, today I choose to rest in Jesus, the shepherd of my life, instead of being fearful about my situation or my future. And our prayer today, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you can never simply be a means to an end in my life, even if it's a noble end. I want you to take the center place in my life. In everything I do today, I choose to believe that you are the shepherd of my life and that your grace is more than sufficient for me. I believe that as my heart is focused on you as Lord, you will deliver me from defeat to victory in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope that's helped you today and I hope that um, helps you fix your eyes on Jesus today. I'm sorry if I've just noticed my um, video has been kind of doing funny things with the colour, I think, because of the light. But um, hopefully it will be better tomorrow, back to normal in the Wendy house. So have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.